Mark Lesser, Finding Clarity. How compassionate accountability builds vibrant relationships, thriving workplaces, and meaningful lives. How often do you sweep issues under the rug because you don't feel you can handle them effectively? Perhaps you don't have a clear position on some matters. Or, like so many other people, you find conflict confronting. But ignoring issues never leads to peace or resolution. All it does is cause discomfort and friction. What if there was a set of strategies you could use to communicate confidently while making everyone feel respected, heard, and valued? One that helped you and the people in your life seek mutually beneficial solutions in the face of challenges. In this blink, we'll explore seven transformative strategies that will help you to do just that. These strategies find their foundation in two core concepts. Clarity, which involves exploring challenges in detail from multiple perspectives, and accountability, which is a shared commitment to addressing problems fairly and with compassion. When clarity and accountability join forces, relationships become vibrant and harmonious, whether in the workplace or at home. Let's dive in and take your communication skills to a whole new level. Practice number one, respond with curiosity, not anger. It's a common scenario. Someone's driving you up the wall and your patience is wearing thin. Before you react with irritation, consider a different tactic. What if curiosity led your interactions with challenging people and situations instead? Swapping suspicion, anger, or judgment with curiosity can help you gain clarity, foster compassionate accountability, and find more constructive solutions. The key lies in retraining your response. Begin by recognizing moments of perceived threats, either internally or externally. In these moments, consciously cultivate a feeling of safety within yourself, which involves letting go of the impulse to judge yourself or others. Next, step out of your comfort zone. This doesn't mean pushing yourself to the point of being overwhelmed, but rather finding a stretch zone, which challenges you just enough to learn and grow one that has the right amount of discomfort to spark curiosity and learning. Inevitably, strong emotions will arise. The way you handle them can also foster curiosity. Shift your attention to your breath, then reframe the situation by seeing its positivity or humor, or simply accept the emotional discomfort mindfully and let it pass through you. This approach can transform painful experiences into opportunities for growth. By fostering a sense of curiosity, you gain more than just a way to handle difficult situations. You develop clarity, wisdom, and compassion. These qualities will help you in challenging times, all while strengthening your relationships. Embracing a curious mindset will be a game changer in how you interact with the world and yourself. Practice number two, let go of unhelpful stories. In the movie of your life, the stories you tell yourself are the script. They shape your reality. But it's not just events that define your experiences. It's the personal narratives you weave around them, too. In fact, your own subjective interpretations of your life often hold more sway than objective truths themselves. To break this cycle, the key skill to master is dropping the story. This transformative practice involves becoming acutely aware of when your interpretations about yourself and events are limiting, negative, or self-defeating, then letting those interpretations go. So, how do you do this? Firstly, through meditation. Meditation will help you understand how you construct your identity and beliefs, so you can question your fixed ideas and loosen the grip of those limiting narratives. Next, identify and challenge the deep-seated beliefs and tendencies 
that you've unknowingly adopted. These could be beliefs about needing to be perfect, valuing achievements over your true self, or viewing the world as inherently dangerous. Once you've recognized these patterns, you can start shifting your behaviors and mindset towards more positive, empowering narratives. Third, create a concrete development plan. Part of this plan involves setting goals, spanning various aspects of your life, like meditation, reading, relationships, work, sleep, and finding joy in small things. Finally, cultivate self-compassion. Speaking to yourself with kindness and acceptance can significantly dampen the negative inner voices and self-critical narratives. A simple yet profound practice to start rewriting your script is to consciously articulate what story you're telling yourself. For instance, if you feel sidelined by your boss, you could say, the story I'm telling myself is that my boss is unfair. Acknowledging your reaction as a story implies that your subjective interpretation of events may not be the absolute truth. Recognizing this allows you to reframe the narrative to one that aligns with your values and aspirations. With commitment and curiosity, over time, you'll be able to craft stories that truly serve you. Practice number three, listen to understand. Each word spoken is like a piece of a puzzle which reveals someone's thoughts and feelings. To fully comprehend the whole picture, you need to master the art of listening. Listening is key in fostering compassionate accountability because the latter is rooted in trust and safety, qualities primarily achieved through listening. However, listening goes beyond merely hearing words. Acting as a reflection of your depth of care, it demands genuine curiosity and effort particularly when you're being offered perspectives that differ from your own. There are different ways to listen. Not listening occurs when you're distracted or indifferent. Listening with preconceived ideas means you assume you already know what someone will say. Listening for content focuses on the narrative without grasping underlying messages. More positive types of listening include Listening for feelings to tune into emotions. Listening for alignment on goals and motivations. Listening for intentions behind words. And listening for identity issues like self-esteem and competence that may underlie the conversation. The highest form of listening, however, is listening for understanding. It's an amalgamation of all other types but with the added layer of empathy and connection. It's about immersing yourself in another person's experience, seeing the world through their eyes, and responding with care and compassion. To listen more effectively, prioritize relationships over roles. While roles are crucial in structuring work, they can be confining, clouding your perception of the person behind the role. Temporarily stepping outside these roles can open up a realm of authentic connections, enabling a deeper understanding of each other's experiences and needs. Adopting practices like clarity circles can further enhance listening. In these circles, asking questions and sharing stories is more important than giving direct advice. And attentive listening in an environment like this nurtures wisdom. Practice number four, mind your gaps. Life's landscape is riddled with gaps. These are the inevitable differences between your aspirations and reality present in every facet of your life, from work to personal relationships. And while you can't avoid these gaps, what you can do is mind them. Compassionate accountability intertwines seamlessly with the practice of minding the gaps. It involves finding clarity and listening for understanding so you can explore the disparity between what you expect and what is achievable. 
building a bridge between the two without getting tangled in limiting narratives. So how do you do this in practice? One effective strategy is the 360-degree review, a comprehensive feedback process involving colleagues from all levels. It begins with appreciation and alignment. Ask colleagues for the qualities they value in you. Then shift to exploring what success looks like for everyone involved. Finally, develop plans to move towards that collective goal. And don't forget, follow-up reviews are crucial to track progress over time. Another tool in your arsenal is surveys. Whether annual or biannual, these anonymous questionnaires can provide insights into company culture and job satisfaction. They pulse check the health of an organization by offering a platform for honest feedback. But sometimes, the simplest approach can be the most effective. Asking colleagues, how are we doing, is an expression of compassion and a desire for understanding. This question opens the doors to deeper, more honest conversations. But beware, fear often tempts people to avoid or deny gaps. But denying issues erodes trust and respect. Persist through excuses and don't accept a superficial fine as the full truth. Ultimately, the goal is not to achieve perfection, but to move in a healthier direction through clarity and understanding. Practice number five, develop a clear vision. Navigating life without a destination in mind is like sailing a ship without a compass. You'll never know if you're headed towards the right horizon. That's the challenge faced when leading without a clear purpose. Whether you're steering yourself, your family, or an entire organization, the cornerstone of effective leadership and goal achievement is having a vision. A vision articulates where you want to go and why it matters. It resonates deeply with your core values and overarching purpose. A well-crafted vision does more than just direct. It ignites passion, unites effort, and fosters a sense of shared commitment. But more importantly, a strong vision promotes accountability through setting targets and tracking progress. So how do you create this vision? Begin by looking inward. Reflect on what truly matters to you. Envision your future successes and the values they represent. This introspection helps craft vision statements that are not only personal, but also resonate in different spheres, like work and family life. Next, delve deeper and articulate why you're here. Here can be defined broadly. Why are you in this job, company, relationship, or even alive right now? This exploration goes beyond surface-level motivations, uncovering your deeper values and life's purpose. It clarifies the destination your vision aims for. Now, armed with your values and life's purpose, draft vision statements for each sphere of your life. These statements could range from inspiring others to combating bias and racism. Your vision is your declaration to the world and to yourself, of the future you aspire to create. The value of visions extends beyond the individual. In groups, shared visions have a transformative power. They bind teams and organizations with common values and aspirations, providing a compass for collective decision-making. To create a shared vision, involve everyone in articulating what success looks like, Craft an inspiring statement that not only feels jointly owned, but also taps into values and emotions and is flexible enough to adapt as needed. Remember, a clear, inspiring vision is like a symphony orchestra where every musician's part is aligned, multiplying potential and achieving more than any one person could alone. Practice number six. Repurpose struggles into opportunities for growth. Have you ever faced a moment in a relationship or a team where everything fell apart? 
you felt like you were at a standstill or worse, spiraling into a breakdown. But what if you considered these breakdowns as catalysts for breakthroughs? The key lies in how you acknowledge, work with, and transform these moments. Despite your best efforts, breakdowns will occur in your interactions. But it's how you recognize problems, feel them, and respond to them that defines your path forward. One pivotal step in turning these breakdowns into breakthroughs is to confront your avoidance behaviors. These can be subtle yet damaging, like shirking responsibilities, falsely agreeing to avoid conflict, or accepting less than ideal conditions because they've always been that way. It's easy to fall into these patterns, but recognizing them is the first step towards change. To avoid these challenging waters, start by refocusing on the core purpose and meaning of your group. Revisiting your collective values and vision can act as a compass, steering you through rough patches with renewed clarity and commitment. Next, cultivate cautious optimism. It's the antidote to the pessimism and cynicism that often creep in during tough times. This mindset acknowledges difficulties, but remains open to the positive outcomes that can emerge from skillful navigation, enhanced trust, alignment, and team effectiveness. Lastly, say no to sugarcoating. See problems as they are. Feel them fully and embrace them as opportunities for learning and creative problem solving. Accountability also plays a vital role in this journey. After all, compassionate accountability is about recognizing challenges and tackling them head on. When accountability discussions are needed, ensure these conversations are direct yet compassionate, laying out the problem, the potential solutions, and the consequences of inaction. By embracing these approaches with compassion and accountability, what was once perceived as obstacles can become stepping stones. It's the very place where you stumble that you find strength to stand taller, wiser, and more aligned than before. Practice number seven, take action now. Life is fleeting. We all know that grim reality. So how can you embrace the present and truly live each day to the fullest? The answer lies in three transformative practices. Renewal, wholeheartedness, and gratitude. Renewal is the process of resetting yourself by gaining clarity through meditation, journaling, or reflection. These practices shouldn't be reserved for special occasions. Take them Make them part of your everyday life. Then there's the concept of wholeheartedness, which means aligning your deepest intentions, feelings, and actions with your values. When life seems like a relentless treadmill, the cure isn't rest. It's bringing your full self to all you do. And let's not forget gratitude. In a world that constantly chases the next big thing, gratitude grounds us reminding us of life's impermanence and preciousness. It's a wake-up call to cherish our loved ones and experiences, to be thankful for now, not later. So here's a call to action for you. Don't defer what you're meant to be doing. Embrace life with confidence, humility, clarity, accountability, and compassion. The time to embody these qualities and take action is now. After all, life waits for no one. To Finding Clarity by Mark Lesser You've learned that cultivating clarity and compassionate accountability can transform how you relate to yourself and others. By responding with curiosity, discarding unhelpful narratives, listening to understand, bridging gaps, developing inspiring visions, Transforming breakdowns into breakthroughs and taking purposeful action, you can gain the clarity and courage to live in alignment with your deepest values. Life is fleeting, so start now. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Through small yet powerful steps, 
you can open the door to personal growth, stronger connections, and a life infused with meaning.